The Startup Life is brought to you by Target. No matter if it's household items to make your home more aesthetically pleasing or a 65 inch TV to complete that man cave, Target is the go-to place for high quality products at an affordable price. Start your Target journey with a link in our show notes. Target, expect more, pay less. This week on The Startup Life. In life, there's no one that's perfect. It's just, you know, what do you do after that mistake? If you, you, know, you watch a game on a Saturday or Sunday and you watch a quarterback make a mistake, I love the guy that has thrown a couple interceptions, but he just comes right back out and rips one down the seam like he, he never threw an interception. And so same in business, you know, especially, you know, a startup and entrepreneur in the tech field, you get told no a ton. All right, Startup Nation, let's take flight with Jake Plummer former NFL QB and co-founder of Radiless. The startup life begins now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hey, Startup Nation. Do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own look, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to see some value today. We got a big time guest in the building today. We got Jake the Snake Plumber from Ready List. What's going on? Oh, you know, just uh, out here in Colorado, just, uh, you know, living large with my family and, uh, trying to get this startup, this company going. So uh, it's, it's very appropriate to be on the show today with you guys. I appreciate reaching out, Dominic. No worries, no worries. I appreciate that. You ready to pour some knowledge in the startup nation today, my man? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. If I got some for them, if there's oh. something they can take from it. Oh yeah, you're gonna do just fine, man. As always, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Like Podcast, and it is powered by the Bench Podcast Network. So Jake, man, first thing first, my man, Let's start with your origin story and your path to entrepreneurship. And tell us a little bit about ReadyList. Yeah, you know, I was uh, a young kid born and raised in Idaho, and my path took me through, uh, you know, Arizona State. From there, after college, played with the Cardinals for six years, and then the Denver Broncos, and then uh, kind of fell in love with my wife and traveled and retired and got out of ball. And uh, like most former football players, you spend so much time focused on the goal and of winning and becoming the best and pushing yourself through, you know, being tired and not wanting to go. You got to learn how to persevere and push yourself through as an athlete. And then, you know, when you retire, there's a whole big void there that you got to try to find the, something to fill it with. So for me, it was sure. having kids was fun and that, it was great. It was an amazing experience just becoming a husband and a father and finding my role in my post-career life. Uh, and then the opportunity, you know, as I was not doing a whole lot, came about from a friend of mine, Chad Freehoff, who I met in 2005 with the Denver Broncos. Right. Uh, he, he had an idea to digitize the playbook and make the learning and studying process much more efficient. And he had this big grand scheme, grand idea that he'd been working on for seven years. Wow. And, you know, he's a graduate of the Colorado School of Mines. Right. So, you know, he's an engineer, smart kid, super brilliant guy. And I know a lot of people. I know a lot of coaches, a lot of players playing 10 years in the league. Got a lot of connections. So when he brought me this concept, it was like, hey, all right, let's go see what we can do here. I'd like to, you know, check it out, see if we can make this thing happen. And here we are, four years later, <laughs> with that. the Ready List. Yeah, Ready List Sports, and it's uh, the sports. It's been a, it's been a journey. Absolutely, absolutely. And Startup Nation, if you want to check out Ready List Sports, we have ReadyListSports.com. The link is there in the show notes for easy access. Just want to get that out there. You're gonna have a, you're gonna hear me do a few plugs like that for you, uh, Jake, on the show here there. So Jake, man, let me ask you about this, man. Talk about the mindset when it takes to play QB one uh, at the highest level. You did it 
phenomenally well there at uh, Capitol High School there in Idaho. You was at <laughs> Arizona State, like you said before, and then in the NFL, man. Talk about that mindset to play QB1 at that level. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, once you get into that position, you know, and I was thrown in at an early age to, to be the quarterback, mainly because I had two older brothers. and One, I got good at catching the ball because they were throwing it at me all the time. For sure. And and two, I got good at throwing it back to them because, you know, they wanted to catch the ball too. So at a young age, I was throwing the big ball with, you know, being small. I didn't get to play with the small ball with my brothers. I had to learn how to throw the big leather football. And it was fun. I was glad to have brothers that included me and kept me active and, and pushed me to be, you know, competitive and get better. But as I, as I started out in Pop Warner, I became a quarterback and I love to play defense. Actually, I love to hit. It was one really? of my favorite things to play linebacker or safety and come up and hit people. So I played both ways all the way through the ninth grade. And then when got to high school, quarterback became more my focus um, as I played some receiver on varsity as a sophomore. But, you know, quarterback is always kind of the, the position that suited me well. I was never too scared to be the guy that everyone focused on. And I feel like uh, I was lucky to have some leadership skills that, that we're able to carry over onto the field to not just, you know, leadership can be such a, a blanketed term where, if you, oh, you're a good leader. You know, there's so many things you got to do to be a good leader, whether that's setting a good example or, you know, being on time and working hard when it's time to work and rallying the guys when everyone's down. And even when you get down, you know, you got to remember you're a leader. People are looking at you. So, being quarterback one, you know, the mindset is you just got to be on it. You got to let things go. You make a mistake. You can't dwell on it too long. Uh, you got to get over it, move on, because as a quarterback, you're not going to be waiting for the ball to get in, put into your hands. You're getting the ball in the next snap. So you got to get over your mistakes quickly and, and constantly strive to get better and to, you know, raise the level of the people around you. And that's really all I try to do as a quarterback was do my job and work my butt off, but then – have those guys around believing in me and working hard also for the common goal, which was to do our best and to try to win. So that's the mindset I had was just to always compete like hard, compete to win no matter what, stay positive. If you could, if you can, you know, fight through the negative moments and then just rally your teammates, never let them quit, you know, cause the, the game ain't over till the that clock hits, uh, you know, zeros across the board. So always keep fighting no matter what. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. And I appreciate you sharing that because the thing is we have a lot of entrepreneurs who are, you know, they're starting off in their business, stuff like that. And they are like the QB one of their business. They're the de facto leader of their company. And so they make mistakes sometimes. But you know, when you talk about, you know, just like learning from those mistakes and moving forward, I think that's some very valuable information in there, Jake. I appreciate you sharing that for of sure. Of course, man. You know, I mean, everybody makes mistakes in life. There's no one that's perfect. It's just, you know, what do you do after that mistake? If you, you know, you watch a game on a Saturday or Sunday and you watch a quarterback make a mistake. I love the guy that has thrown a couple interceptions, but he just comes right back out and rips one down the seam like he, he never threw an interception. And so same in business, you know, and especially, you know, a startup and entrepreneur in the tech field, you get told no a ton uh, looking for investors or Absolutely. looking for people to sit on the board. You know, you got to have, First, you got to have a product, but then, you know, if they don't like it or if you get told no, you got to just keep pushing through all those, uh, you know, those moments and persevere because nothing comes easy, whether it's sports or business. You got to keep working. Absolutely. Appreciate you sharing that. So I want to ask you about this, Jake, because, you know, take me through the process of learning a playbook. I know there's a many quarterbacks who come into the league and stuff like that, and some of them kind of have a difficult time learning playbooks and stuff like that. Jared Goff of the uh, L.A. Rams famously said, it's almost like learning a different language. So <laughs> yeah, take me through that process, Jake, if you would. Yeah, it's a great, you know, what you just said there about Goff and, you know, Deshaun Watson, a lot of these young kids coming into the league with high expectations. Uh, you know, it's not even just the league. It's going into college, too, and all right. the way down into high school. The game of football has become very complex. And mm. I kind of say that's the Peyton Manning effect because Peyton was so smart could do so much on the field that now I think a lot of coaches are trying to demand that of their players and especially the quarterbacks to know more and know everything. And it's hard if you don't have uh, you know, a photographic memory, some guys do. Aaron Rodgers rumored has it. He has a photographic memory. So, you know, he can remember a play five years later, the same play he remembers it where for me, I didn't, I didn't have that. I had to relearn gotcha. our offense basically, 
not the basic stuff, but all the day four, five, six day installation. You know, I had to relearn that every year. So for me, it, it took a lot of study time. It took a lot of time, you know, drawing formations, drawing routes, drawing out the progressions by hand, you know, long form in a book, in a notebook, uh, you know, read the play to myself, uh, learn the verbiage. Uh, that's one thing that's really tough when you move right. from college to the pros. Now, you know, in college, kids just look to the sideline and then they clap and there's no, there's no play call. So you get to that NFL and you're talking about, you know, flip, zip, 76, you shallow cross, X, come back on two. You know, that's a short, that's a pretty short call. You know, that's, that's right. what you got to go and re regurgitate immediately from your OC in the huddle and sound, sound clear and know what you're saying. And so a lot of kids do struggle with that. And back to the point of, you know, it's like learning a foreign language. That's what Chad Freeoff, my, my boss, the CEO, the creator of the ready list, right. kind of, he studied the Rosetta stone for learning a foreign language, which was to study the language, but to go through multiple tests, like constantly being tested on your retention of what you just studied to right. tell you up those retention rates so much till it's second nature. When you think about a word in Spanish, you bring it back immediately. Same with the plays. If you can get enough repetitions and build that confidence and up and, and up your retention rate. So you remember formations, plays, protections, mm -hmm. progressions, all of that. You just can play faster then. So, you know, studying is tough and, and coaches are always geared to load you up with more. And sometimes they don't know if you already know what they've given you. So what's great about our software is it, it measures that it gives you those measurables and data that can tell you as a coach, when it's time to put the pedal to the metal and give them, give the kids more stuff or when it's time to pull the reins a little bit and say, wait a sec, we're struggling right here on these concepts. We need to work on these at the start of practice and make sure we run them during practice rather than wasting time on plays that everybody knows. So yeah, the study, the studying that goes into playing football, a lot of fans, a lot of, you know, your regular people that have never played, they don't understand the complexities of the game and how much goes into just one simple run play. How many guys have to have certain jobs and to make sure that it works off in the right timing and everything. It's, it's a, it's, de there's definitely a lot to learn and we're trying to accelerate that learning process, make it more efficient. And then again, stamp that those memories in these kids brains. So when that huddle breaks, it's full goal. They're not thinking they're just playing with a quiet mind. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that, Jake. I actually want to ask a follow-up question. I was going to ask this later, but since we're already here, I want to go ahead and ask that because on the website, readylist.com, you talk about, you know, uh, not only the, the retention rates and, you know, making sure that, you know, those learners have that playbook in their mind, not just having it, but owning it, right? So, and I know you, yeah. you, you have it created to where it's for different styles of learners, whether it be kinesthetic, or auditory and stuff like that. So I'm curious, I know you got uh, Paul Casanova, who's your, your marketing director, but he also was a high school teacher. So I'm curious if you consulted with other educators about learning styles for different types of players and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it, it, as we grow as a company, we're realizing, you know, as, as we can, you know, bring this product to market. Um, and like you just mentioned, I mean, that's really a large piece of our company is the being able to learn through multiple learning styles. Right. As I said, I liked, I liked to, I was more tactile and like to draw the plays out that really helped. But if I didn't have that visual learning to go along with it, then I wouldn't, I couldn't take that off of paper and, and make it become visual myself. I had to, I, I could close my eyes and visualize, but then to go out on the practice field and do a walkthrough would just help me to see it and see the angles. And in 3d, you know, watch everything move. So kids struggle these days you know a lot of kids uh that's how they are learning in grade school junior high up through high school they have screens they're learning on a device so we've made our product device neutral to allow for you know these kids that are so busy these days with multiple sports at times with uh, social life with school with home life and family we want to provide them a tool that can that quickly they can study and study the game plan, then go right into a testing protocol that's auto-generated from your playbook. So a coach doesn't have to make that test or sit there and come up with the questions or even grade it. It's automatically done with our software. So now, like, like you mentioned, like these kids with learning disabilities, we you would find out what style they excel at. 
absolutely maybe what style they're they're struggling with and educators love this because in the classroom some kids struggle how 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 come it's because of the teaching style and maybe they're not getting enough visual learning or enough auditory learning to go along with what the teacher is already providing them so we can do a lot with our software other than make you a faster, more knowledgeable football player, we can also assess maybe something that's happening in the classroom to help you get better and do better in school. Because as we know, till you become a pro, you got to balance both of those. You better, you got to take care of your classwork and your field work. Cause if there's no classwork done, you can't get out on the field. So making sure you, you know, kids don't get lost in the, in the cracks with a, with a learning disability or a different way of learning. We're providing all those tools to these coaches and these players to again, like I said, make sure that they're up in their retention rates and, and learning at the right pace. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. And, and as the, the parent company for our show is an education consultant firm, Al, so I appreciate all of what okay, you yeah. said. So that's why cool. I wanted to ask that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So I want to ask you this as well, because when you talk about ready lists and technology and sports, it really is changing the way how we, uh, how we learn playbooks how we do in-game adjustments, how we do halftime adjustments. Talk about that transition from when you were playing Pop Warner into now to where technology is so heavily integrated into the game. Yeah, you know, it's an, even just <laughs> my last days in the pros, you know, that's, that's before they had trackers put on players. Right. And, you know, they were just starting towards, you know, the last four or five years of my career started counting how many throws I was making during practice, not just live reps, but even every warm-up throw I was making every day to kind of gauge how much work my arm was getting so that, you know, you could have a fresh arm during the time you needed it most, which was game day. You know, technology has definitely become a large part of, of all sports, not only for preparing players on the field and getting them ready to, to go out and excel, but also during those training processes to make sure that they're not overdoing it, but also to make sure they're maximizing their time. And, and really the tech has made things much more efficient. I think the game tracker technology is really cool when they can put, put a, you know, a unit on a player and see how fast they're running when they're running down the field. I always love that. My kids love that to see how, you know, oh my gosh, Jay was going 18, 19 miles per hour right there. Right. That's pretty amazing. So, Crazy. You know, tech is definitely here to stay. And that's why, you know, there's so many, you know, technologies out there to help with the game. But there isn't a whole lot uh, of digitized playbooks where you can move the players around and, and then get right. that kinesthetic tactile learning that will up tremendously up retention rates when you're interacting with the content and using your fingers. There's just there's a tie into the brain there that helps up retention rates. And that's where with tech and with the screens and what we built being device neutral and able in an app for in an app to be taken offline it gives these kids you know really no excuse you got 10 minutes waiting for the bus hey get on your phone text your girlfriend and then go study your plays real quick and you're done and you're done and then the coach would get all that in his inbox he goes to bed that night going all right my quarterback's ready to go you go to and you you, you as a player would go to bed saying all right i got 100 percent. i'm ready for game day now you know you take away that stress and those worries that, that players have to go through. Um, you know, that's really one thing we strive to do too, is just take away the stress that these kids are under to perform and to prepare. And they're not really being given much more than, you know, a coach telling them what to do and here's your playbook, go study. We we're, we're trying to complete that circle and give these kids that correct tool to use so that coaches now can give it to them and then get those results back immediately and, and analyze that data, data to know where their team is. And so, yeah, tech is, is a large part of the game, and we're hoping to fill, fill a void, really, where you know, there's nothing really progressive to the point like what we've created to help these kids learn the game. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. That peace of mind uh, aspect is very important. I'm glad you said Huge. that as well, for sure, for sure. Last question before we go to break really quickly, because on realistsports.com, you have a blog and you wrote a piece earlier this year, specialization have a place in youth sports, where basically you're advocating for uh, youth sport or for people who play youth sports, young children, to play multiple sports. And I think yeah. you're, and you're fighting against this perception that in order to become a superstar athlete in college or the pros, that you only have to focus on one sport. And you talk about that. 
Give me the inspiration behind that piece. Why did you feel it was important to write that piece, Jake? Well, I, I just I see a lot of kids, and I, I read about it a lot and, and even know quite a few of kids that have burnt out. Um, you know, I burnt out on football, but I was 30 years old. I would played it for a long time right. where you got 14, 15, 16-year-old kids that are, that are getting burnt out on not just football, but say soccer or baseball or golf or tennis. And, and you wonder why. And if you look at what their parents put them into and what they were exposed to was usually just one sport. And then time spent training to make yourself really good at that sport. And for me, when I grew up, I mean, it was, I was super excited when one season was over because there was usually a couple weeks where there, nothing was going on. And then it was right. baseball season. Like, all right, let's get the glove out. A new sport. <laughs> gotcha. I would tire. I would tire of basketball. I would be like, all right, ready for basketball to be over. What's next? Then baseball would be over and it'd be summertime. And that's when it was cut loose, right? I'd play tennis played baseball, played golf, played hoops all the time. I mean, it was games all the time, playing all the time. And then once you get into junior high and high school, I, I played three sports. I know that, you know, population density and, and some schools with programs limit some kids' ability to play all three sports because they just – they might not crack the top 15 and make it on the basketball team for varsity – but that doesn't mean you can't go play hoops down at the local YMCA or go play hoops out at a court outside. And that was my point is like, don't just play one sport. It's great to train and get good at one sport, but all these other games and sports you can play outside of it can enhance your skill set in your chosen sport. A game I always played in a sport that I love still to this day is handball. And, mm. you know, it's not racquetball, but it's played right. in the same court as a racquetball court. You have to use your left hand and your right hand, and you have to be able to move, have spatial awareness, have mental toughness. It's a really, really good sport to enhance basically every skill you would need to play shortstop, to wrestle, to be a basketball player. Absolutely. To play field hockey. I mean, whatever it is, you're watching this little ball go flying around this court, and you're tracking the ball. I mean, any of these games and sports you can play outside of your chosen sport help your skill set. So I'm a big proponent of – Play as many possible sports as you can. If you can't make the varsity, then put a badminton set up in your backyard. At least play badminton or horseshoes or something that's challenging you to be competitive and also challenging your senses and making you just be uncomfortable at times. So I, I do wish, you know, the specialization and, you know, Malcolm Gladwell, I think it was, wrote that 10,000 hours, you know, you have to practice right. to, be, to be proficient at your sport. Well, if you're 13 and that's what you're doing, then, you know, what are you going to do when you're 23? You know, you, you don't want to throw all your eggs in one basket at a young age. And I see a lot of people that, you know, jumping on the bandwagon or jumping on this movement like Kobe Bryant with, you know, don't retire kid, like kids retiring from their sport because what I said earlier, they're burnt out. They're right. tired of playing the same silly sport all year long. We're not meant to do that. And I think that, you know, parents that do that are, are being misled or told the wrong kind of information. And uh, hopefully that the pendulum will switch and more kids will start diversifying. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. How you like being on the startup life so far, Jake? It's good, man. I like it. You got a good thing going. I appreciate it. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're getting great value from Jake's content, but we got to pay a few bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Life Podcast, and it is powered by the Binge Podcast Network. Startup Nation, Kenda and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stop by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us, 
That's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick and mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, start your Target journey with the link in our show notes where you can expect more and pay less. All right, Startup Nation, so let's continue. So Jake, if you would, man, tell me why the name ReadyList? How did you come up with the name for the company? <laughs> well, we, we, gave, we gave it a lot of thought, but my boss, Chad, was the one who actually came up with that you know, okay. the ready list is a couple different meanings to it chad's meaning and why he came up with that name was when you go into a game usually offensively at least you would have you know 15 plays already pre-scripted so you knew right away like kickoff we get the ball at the 25 with the return our very first play we already knew what it was going to be there was no changing it it was going to be that play and what chad when he was playing what they called that They called it the ready list. So it's the ready list for your top 10, 15 plays to start the game. There's also in some pro organizations, uh, a ready list composed of players that are not signed by teams currently that they're, they're inactive or they're not on any, any organization, Mm -hmm. but they're ready. They're ready to come in and play. So if you had an injury at receiver, you have a ready list of receivers that are not signed by another team that you could go get bring them in and they're ready to play. They actually probably were in camp and didn't cut it. Maybe they got cut late. So there's also that meaning too, but ready list basically gets you ready. It's going to help you get ready. And then we put sports on the end of it because, you know, we're football players, right? We got, we got plans to go into other sports. Football is one that you need a playbook. It's a very robust playbook, but there are other sports with playbooks. You know, one sport that's very intriguing is lacrosse. It's growing so fast. So many young players are playing out here in Colorado. There's so many young players playing that there's not enough coaches to coach them correctly. They just not enough former lacrosse players that are ready to be coaches or parents that have played lacrosse. So there's an education level, not only for players, but there's also a a whole generation of coaches that need to learn how to coach lacrosse. So we want to go into other sports eventually. So that's why it's ready list sports. And uh, hopefully down the road, we'll be covering every sport that has a playbook and be the go-to for coaches who want to get their players ready and coaches who want to get organized and have a, a great way to, to, to send their playbook out. Gotcha. And I appreciate you sharing that, Jay, because I was going to ask you about that because one of the things I did see in your business model is, is that you want to get out into other sports. And I, and yeah. I, I'm reminded that uh, I've seen some of you guys' shirts that you wear and you have the Under Armour symbol uh, and one of my favorite uh, entrepreneurs is Kevin Plank, the founder and CEO of Under Armour. And one yeah. of the things that he's always said that like he, he always talks about is doing one thing right really well and then slowly rolling out into other things. And so that's one of the things I do really love about what you guys got going at, at Radio is that you're focusing on football right now and then you're slowly yep. rolling out into those other sports. So I, I can definitely appreciate that for sure. Yes, that's a, uh, that is a smart, I guess, you know, for us, it's, we've heard that from a lot of people and Kevin Plank, who I know pretty well, cause mm-hmm. I wore Under Armour back when they were starting out. And, uh, right. It, I, I, my roommate in college was friends of his and, in, 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 uh, at Fork Union Military Academy, I think. So gotcha. yeah, you know, focus on football. We're focusing even on offense. That's where we proved concept. We're currently developing the defensive side of our playbook tool and special teams is along coming along the way too. So we know, you know, there's more to football than just scoring points. But our focus was on what we knew, me and Chad being quarterbacks, that you got to know everything about the offense and every other – those other ten dudes, the more they can know about what you're trying to do in each play, the better your, your whole offense can run as a system. So, yeah, staying focused is key. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. One of the things you guys tout, you know, is, is the affordability of the product. And that's something I appreciate because yeah. there are many kids who live in certain areas, Jake, that you very well know that have the skills and have the tools, but they don't have those type of systems in place, those type of resources in place to learn from like a, a digitized web-based uh, playbook. So talk about how, why it was important to make it very affordable across the board. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about having screens. This is on phones or tablets or iPads, but 
not every kid in America has a phone or iPad or tablet. Right. So, you know, having access to that when you're at school is one thing. But then letting, you know, making sure that the school can afford the software and even down into the youth level. You know, for me personally, I grew up, you know, my parents did not grow up with excess means. I mean, we, we made it. We had a lot of support. And, you know, at certain times there was, I'm, you know, you can't get a brand new pair of shoes. You got to wear your brother's old shoes. So I know full well from growing up, you know, it's hard for parents. And especially today and in football, when you're talking about tackle football, you got a 10 year old, you want to protect their head or a 12 year old, you want to protect their head. You got to spend a couple hundred bucks for a nice helmet. Shoulder pads are expensive. Right. You know, the, uh, the, the uniform and the cost to play in the league, you know, you're getting up in the couple hundreds of dollars. So our affordability is, is such that we want to crack the market and not put parents out more than maybe a cup of coffee is what it's going to cost them That's for important. their child to have this system for, their whole season and right. then coaches too a lot of coaches are volunteer coaches you know they're they're volunteering on their own time so they're not making money at the youth level some coaches get paid a little at high school but we don't want to make our product be a burden on their wallet just so that they can have this tool we want to really make this be you know accessible across the board for the higher income families or teams down all the way to the low income and ways to pull that off to be creative is is to find sponsors, you know, big companies out there that are already right. giving a lot of money to their youth organization or locally, local communities that already go out and, you know, get the local businesses to, to donate 500 bucks here and there to fund that youth team. Absolutely. We're trying to like add on the cost of the ready list to those you know, sponsors that are already giving. So now a coach doesn't have to pay a dime. No parent pays a dime. Now their kids have access to a tool that will really give them the chance to, to see if they want to go further on and play football at a higher level or push to be the best, you know, we're hoping to, you know, give them that tool. And uh, for me, I had to make it affordable. I couldn't make, you know, as a capitalist, that's not the way to go. You know, you want to charge more if you want to make money, but I'm not, a, I'm not geared at like a capitalist. I'm more, I want to make this a realistic tool that people want to use. And in order to do that, we had to stay uh, affordable. And some say maybe we're, we're underselling it, but, I'm okay with that. I, I want people to use this and enjoy it and, and benefit from it. Jake, I, I, I appreciate you sharing that for sure. Really quickly, I know it's the top of the hour. I only have three more questions, then I'm done. I just want to say All thank right. you so much for your time as well. I want to switch gears really quickly because we have a lot of people who listen to the show, Jake, who are uh, they're not only entrepreneurs, but they're former military as well. And one yeah. of your really good friends that they admire is Pat Tillman. And so I want to really? ask you about him really quickly. Uh, let's say if ReadyList were, were to give like a camp or something today, and, and if Pat was here and you invited him to that camp, what would those young athletes learn from Pat? <laughs> oh, man, that's a great question. You know, it's funny because I had a camp in Boise, Idaho. I used to run back when I was playing, and, and Pat would come to my camp all the time. And, Got you. You know, I, my mom had to say, uh, the first day at camp, she went over to him and she said, um, Pat, do you have, did you, did, is this what you're wearing to camp? And, and the only reason she said that is because he had on a pair of cargo shorts that were all ripped and tattered and hanging down. And, you know, my mom isn't, you know, you know prim and proper, but she, you know, she knows to represent yourself. And Understood. so she's like, well, Pat, maybe, maybe you have another pair of shorts you could put on, you know, because Pat didn't care. He was just, what you got from him wasn't what he was wearing or how he smelled, or what he drove up in. What you got from him was the real deal, authentic, genuine, like, passion that, you know, you, you probably have friends that just have a lot of passion for life. For sure. Um, that, that was Pat, you know. So those campers will get someone that's not just going to phone it in and line them up and have them run around. They're, he's, he would get involved and get in your grill if you needed to. And, you know, as a, as a young kid, you know, don't, don't uh, be alarmed if you heard a couple cuss words because – <laughs> Pat did have a little bit of a mouth on him also. Fair enough. But, you know, he just was in the moment. He was passionate. He didn't really think about, uh, you know, cleaning up his, his mouth because he was just so passionate about what he was talking about. Sometimes there was a few words that would slip out. But Pat was an amazing person, uh, you know, a great teammate, an amazing friend, just a super uh, influential person that, you know, not just me from being his teammate for – three years at Arizona State and three years with the Arizona Cardinals. 
but I guarantee you there's people all over Tempe, down to ASU, and wherever he was during his life that were affected by him in a positive way, mainly because he really lived in the moment. He was not a dull person, and he was always very genuine and in, intrigued by other people and their, whether it was their plight or their, their, their life and where they've come from or what their goals were. He just loved to dig in and find out who you were, what you were about, and kind of get a good pulse of uh, if you were going to be someone you'd want to spend some time with. So I miss Pat dearly. I know a lot of people out there that have fought for our country that I, I thank you for your sacrifice and your time. I'm sad that Pat's not around, but I think it's amazing the amount of people that have no idea really who he really was as a person that are so influenced and inspired by his legacy it's really amazing to have known somebody like him, call them one of my best buds, to see that influence he has still while he's not here is just remarkable. He was an amazing dude. Absolutely. And, and as a veteran, uh, I, I, I am definitely appreciative of you keeping his story alive, keeping his legacy alive. And I am one of those veterans that are definitely uh, influenced by his story and his cause. So I appreciate you sharing all of that. Uh, well, thank you for your time too, man. I, I sometimes wonder, I, could, I don't know if I could have done what Pat did. I'm, I'm, right. He was amazing for him to, to, to really go do what he did. Took a lot of, uh, you know, just a strong belief in yourself. And, and that's one thing. He was a very confident person. So Absolutely. anyone out there doubting yourself, you know, we're all capable of great things. You just got to put your mind to it. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. Jake, I believe all entrepreneurs have a superpower. What's your entrepreneurial superpower <laughs> and why? Yeah, man, I seem to be able to like, if there's a door that's closed and there's just no way to get into it. I've got a way to like open that door. Okay. Uh, you know, whatever, however you want to take that, uh, you know, just the ability through, through my career and through my life and how I've lived it, um, you know, the ability to call, whether it be an influential coach or a former player or a, you know, president of a, an NFL organization, like I, I'm able to call. And, and get in those doors, which I know a lot of young entrepreneurs or a lot of young companies that have an amazing idea and a, a beautifully laid out plan and everything in place, but they just can't get those meetings with those decision makers, or it takes them years of connecting the dots to get from A to B. I can pretty much get to B really quickly with, you know, whether it be an old coach that coached me at Arizona State or the Cardinals, or with the Broncos, or even a coach that, that a defensive coordinator had to game plan against me. You know, there's, there was respect built through my career that is still carried over into my professional life. And when I look back on all of that, I'm, I'm thankful that I, I, I carried myself the way that I did. And I, I, I was the person that I was you know, raised to be by my mother. And now that's coming back uh, in, in the entrepreneurial side of things by just, right. like I said, being able to get to those Hall of Fame quarterbacks and get their eyeballs on our product and, and hear what they have to say about it. You know, those, those kind of meetings don't take place unless you have the ability to get that door open. So that's my superpowers, man. If there's a door closed, boom, I can open that thing up somehow, some way. <laughs> I hear that. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. And before yeah. I ask the last question, Jake, I just want to say thank you so much for your time to coming on the Startup Life Podcast, powered by the Bench Podcast Network. You gave amazing value from top to bottom, man, and I really appreciate it. But now I'm going to thank turn, you. No, no worries, no worries. I'm now I'm going to turn the microphone over to you, man, because just like you was just talking about, there's an entrepreneur out there that feels stuck. They don't know how to move forward, or they're afraid to start their their company, man. Give them some words of motivation today. Tell them to keep moving forward. Man, you know I, I I always you know kind of think back to my days playing football or playing sports, just in general. Uh, everyone talks about how valuable the le life lessons you learn when you're when you're playing sports. It, it is true because as an entrepreneur, even though I can open a lot of doors, we're still we've been told no a lot, and that can get very frustrating. I have three young kids, and when you tell them no, especially my little almost three year old baby girl, when you tell her no, it's like the world ended, right? So, for for those people out there listening, you know, don't get don't get uh, discouraged by someone saying no. If you believe in what you have, that's the really important thing is to believe in your product and have passion about it. Don't give up. Don't, don't let one door being shut or one person saying no 
you know, turn you away from, from excelling and pushing your product and your idea further. We've had to do that now for four years, trying to crack into the coaching world and the, the playbook world to try to show them that there's a better way to do this. We're still struggling to do that, even though we have a product that's proven, that's working, that coaches are loving, the Hall of Fame quarterbacks love. We still get told no, but that's okay. Because we got, a, I got a passion with this. I know it's going to work. I believe in it. I believe in my team. And, you know, just like throwing an interception, you can't stop after that because, you know, you might get the ball back with two minutes left and you're down by six. And that's when the real magic can happen. So don't give up, you young entrepreneurs. With you got a good idea, just keep, keep believing in it and get creative. Find a way to crack into that market you're trying to crack into and, and stay at it. The dam will break eventually if you have a positive attitude. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you so much. And that's going to wrap up this session of The Startup Life. Jake, did you enjoy being on the show, my man? Yeah, Dominic was awesome. Thank you, man. I enjoyed talking in a new kind of uh, world for me, entrepreneur world. It's new. It's, it's fun, but I'm enjoying it, and I appreciate being able to share my story with you guys. Thank you. No worries. No worries. All right, Startup Nation. So here's my final take. Jake provided great value from not only his, his knowledge as a business owner, but also as an NFL quarterback. Because the thing is, Startup Nation, when you're in your business and you start your business, your team members are looking to you, just like Jake when he talks about when he was in the huddle. Your team members are looking for you for those next steps, for that plan. And it's up to you to make sure you're scaling your business responsibly and you're leading your team down the field on the right path to success. Because that's honestly what they are looking for. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life. What up, Startup Nation? Did you enjoy today's episode? But guess what? We got another episode coming this Monday, and I want to give you a clip and see what that sounds like. Take a listen. There is the piece of improving on my craft, and there's also the fact that my craft isn't just dancing, it's teaching dance. For sure. So I think there's an extra level of responsibility because I'm not just training myself, I'm training other people. And so to me, it's always about being the best teacher so that the words that I say actually communicate Mm -hmm. or the way I demonstrate communicates. Uh, and also that what I teach is safe for my students for the long term. That Startup Nation is my really good friend, Liz Kenmark. She's one of our friends that we met through our partnership through SCORE. So if you want to get that episode as soon as it is available, go ahead and subscribe to the Startup Life on any of your major podcast platforms. So that way, when that episode with Liz is available, it'll be right there waiting for you. But until then, Startup Nation, get out of here. You got a company to grow.